to place patients in position of comfort. Uh, most often that's gonna be a, the Fowler position, semi-Fowler, which all that means Fowler and semi-Fowler are just fancy words for their sitting up. That's all that means. Um, administer you know, an inhaler if they are prescribed one and administer continuous positive airway pressure. And we're gonna talk more about CPAP right now. So the biggest thing with this is that your patient needs to be 100% conscious. They cannot be mentally altered at all. And who's on, can somebody turn off their mic please? I'll do it for you, I got you. There you go. He's gonna meet everybody. All right. <clears throat> Okay, uh, blowing oxygen or air continuously at low pressures. So mo these patients that are getting CPAP, first of all, they, they cannot be mentally altered and they have to breathe on their own, okay? And most of these patients, the biggest issue with them is gonna be a fluid issue. So like your patients that have cardiac heart failure, that have that buildup of, of uh, fluid in the lungs, usually these patients are gonna get a CPAP. And the way it works for these patients with CPAP is that, so these are your patients, so pulmonary edema, drowning, asthma, COPD, respiratory failure in general. But pulmonary edema, drowning, even asthma, because some fluid does build up with asthma and COPD. Uh, what two illnesses fall under COPD? Anybody? Which two illnesses fall under COPD? Uh, is it emphysema and bronchitis? Yes. So bronchitis also makes a buildup of mucus as well. Um, and emphysema, emphysema is the alveoli shriveling down and lo losing that elasticity, which makes them less effective as far as you know, bringing oxygen into the capillaries. So what CPAP does is that it's going to throw, like it says here, it throws positive pressure. So it's going to push air into your airway. And what it does is it's gonna keep your alveoli inflated because it's like it's like blowing up a balloon. It's going to do that. At the same time, that pressure will push away any fluid around the alveoli that may be causing that uh, interference between that gas exchange from the alveoli to the capillary. So if you're pushing fluid away from the alveoli, um, you're gonna have a temporary change of oxygen and CO2 until, you know, the fluid comes back in around the alveoli. Does anybody uh, not understand that? Because I know I did cover this in the classroom, but it's been a while. All right, cool. So here's some contraindications. Again, contraindications are reasons why you would not want to use a CPAP. Uh, again, severely mentally altered, they're all mentally altered because Again, they need to be breathing on their own and they need to be normal breathing normally. So lack of normal spontaneous respiration. So they said that inability to sit up, hypotension shock. Pretty much if your patient is if your patient is normal for the most part, they can use it. If they're not mentally altered, if they're sitting up, if they can function normally but are having difficulty breathing, you can put a CPAP on them. Okay. If they're having difficulty breathing, but they are normal for the most part, besides the difficulty breathing, they can have a CPAP if needed. So some more contraindications. So nausea and vomiting, obviously, because we're, we're pushing air into the system. So if we push air in the system and they're nauseous, they throw up, they can expitiate. Um, they can have some of that vomit go into the actual lungs. Uh, again, penetrating chest trauma, that is gonna cause more damage uh, for that patient. And we have a uh, shock. Again, if they're in shock, they're gonna be mentally altered. Upper GI bleed, again, if we blow air into their system, some of that fluid that comes up, that blood can go down into their airway and that's gonna cause a bigger problem. Uh, conditions preventing good mass seal. Side effects. Okay, I see, let's take a little, uh, 10 minute break one more time guys and I'll meet you guys in 10 minutes.